hello finally it's letting me go live oh my sorry about that shadow it's my there my microphone wire there get it moved out of the way enough i guess oh my goodness uh, sorry about the stiffly sniffle oh All right. Okie dokie. Hello, hello, Judy. Hello, Lena. All right. <laughs> Lena, if you want to get a screenshot. I don't know if you want to paint along. Mine's mixed media, not just watercolor. But there's the um, there's the original uh, photo. Hi, AJ. Hey, Sharon. So the clay is dry. I actually want to uh oh great I guess I lost it down back probably <clears throat> I was gonna file down the bottom where I went over the edge but my other my sanding block seems to have it probably fell down behind my desk, I think, because it was right here. Oh, well. Oh, we're waiting for people to come in. I did get my, um, let me go back over here. I did get my 10-step drawing flowers book. Hey, Dr. Dot. Hey, Dar. Hey, Lou. Super 7. Ta-da. Ta-da. So, I have, this is a, so today I'm working on this. It's a Christmas present. It's for my niece's um, girlfriend. It is from, uh, from Dollarama, an 8x10 wooden um, panel, wooden canvas. It's like this. This is a 12 by 16 one that I use for my art desk, my painting. And this is an 8 by 10 one. Hey, Dee Dee. So... My first steps, I should actually show you the pictures in case you didn't see them on Twitter. Let me show you photos. So, this is when the um, gel medium was still wet. So you can still see the gel medium there between the, oops, between the rocks. So what I did was I just drew the rock shapes onto the wood. I used matte gel to paste the clay. You can see that the clay is very gray when it's wet. It is, um, it does... Oh, I think I put it away. D-A-Z. It's that German-made German, German -made air dry clay. And I happened to cat, catch it on sale. Um, oh, it was like $17.99 at our Michaels for the like two pound, quite large block of it. Um, oh, hold on. Uh-oh. Okay, there we go. No, what's going on? Hold on, hold the horses. Uh, 
There we go. Sorry, it zoomed in by mistake there. Um, so it's air dry clay. Hey, hello. Hi, Aline. Hi, Vicky. Hello, hello, hello. Beth, didn't, don't want to miss anyone. Joan, hello, Joan. Um, so this was when it was all wet. The clay was still wet. The gel medium was still wet. Okay. And you do need a gel medium. Kind of need a little bit of heaviness to make sure it really, the clay itself adheres sort of as it dries, but I wouldn't trust it to adhere to the wood without the medium. It probably would to paper, but I would still wouldn't trust it. Okay. And then, oh, hold on, sorry. All right. So then this is when after the, after the, um, after the clay dried, I used Try Art, which is a Canadian type. And actually, I like this a lot better than the Daniel Smith watercolor ground. Um, it's when you're putting when you're when you open this, it's it's like you can actually see the torn up like it's like there's torn up pieces of paper in it. It's like fluffy. See the texture? It's really cool. The Daniel Smith stuff is much more... Um... Oh, sorry, I didn't turn down the volume. Oops, there's a text. Okay. Okay, that was my cousin just she's trying to sort out student loan stuff for her son because in order to not have to pay interest on a student loan, he has to prove that he's still in university. Anyway, okay, so that's the TriArt watercolor ground, and I've done two layers of that. And so it's um it's actually given me a Almost like a rough, uh, try and show you the texture. Yeah, it's almost like a rough watercolor paper. It, in On the jar, I um, put it on with um, a foam brush. Now, if I had used like a credit card scraper, if I was doing it on a flat surface, all flat surface, I would have used a palette knife or a credit card scraper. And you could have gotten it a little smoother than this, but... Since I was going for texture anyway, I figured this worked out great. So it's almost like a rough watercolor paper finish. And I did the edges as well. Hi, Ellen. All right. So I am going to let's move to the screen that has the let me get it a little bit lighter here. There we go. So I'm going to use my <coughs> These aren't quite dry yet because I just put them in here this afternoon. Some of them are drying out nicely. Notice that these two yellows, my cadmium yellow and my lemon yellow, cadmium yellow deep and my lemon yellow, they both were separated in the tubes. So they came out with a little extra of the binder on the top. So they came out a little bit runny, but they should still dry. So nothing you can do when that happens. 
but uh, they're still drying. They're setting up quite nicely in there. So, so I'm going to use the Shinhan. You can do the same technique and use acrylic paints over it, but um, I really love, you know, me and watercolors, my favorite. So, um, under my mixed media, um, if you're looking for other versions of this, uh, showing the step with the clay, um, under my playlist that says mixed media, um, there's a three part one where I did the, um, a Peggy's Cove diptych um, on a stream two years ago. Because I did some for my nieces. So. Anyway, so. Here we go. Oh, all right. Now I'm going to be sure to use my Zen brushes today just because I don't want to use my Mimic or my um, Silver Black Velvet on this because, first of all, the clay is rough, and this is pretty rough. And it's not a very soft, because it's on wood, it's not really, it's not like on paper. And I don't want to ruin my really good brushes. So I'm going to use my Zen brushes, which is, this is a squirrel mix. So it does have some squirrel hair and some artificial squirrel. Um, I'm going to need a smaller size. I can use my Cotman, I guess. I'm going to need my rake brush for the grasses. Um, all right, those are in the wrong container. Oh, that brush ended up upside down by mistake. Oh, I can get ruined. Sorry, just looking for... know where all my zen brushes went i seem to be missing an awful lot of paint brushes pretty sure i didn't leave them at home i don't use them very much anymore but all right and there's a small one okay all right so that should work okay oh where's my other there's that one all right So I'm going to use my Cotman, which are synthetic, so they should hold up better. And my Zen, which is a combination of squirrel and synthetic. All right, so let's start with the sky. There's not a whole lot of sky showing, but um, for the sky, I'm going to need some cerulean. All right. Where is my spray bottle? Here it is. Yeah, it's already drying quite nicely in my palette, actually, after only a couple of hours. So that's not bad. All right, so I'm going to wet the area that's going to be sky here. I'll do this whole top area, and then whatever gets filled in with uh, trees gets filled in. But I want to make sure I have enough done as sky. Yep. 
Yeah, brush burglar. Who knows? Like, I don't know. I always put them, I leave them here to dry flat, and then I put them back away when they're dry, and I don't know. I'm sure I've just misplaced them. They might end up on the floor behind my who knows. It's interesting. I've never I've never uh, painted on anything this rough before, so could be interesting. I want to make sure I get some up here because I'm painting the edge. I may end up going back and doing this the edge of it black, but for now I'm going to paint it as I'm painting the um, panel. So. This might have worked better if I used gesso and I may. Oh no, it's lifting kind of. It's lifting nicely. All right. It's just hard to tell whether it's going to work like watercolor or not because it's not going on exactly the same. I think I need to use a little ultramarine as well. Okay. Let's try that. Hi, Kathy B. Do I have a cat? No, I did have two cats, but they lived to be one was almost 17 and the other was 17. When they uh, died. Oh, because of the lost brushes? Yeah, no. Yeah, I had two Himalayans, but... All right, pause and presto. <laughs> Joycey Mint knows how to make my crochet tight. Yes, she does. Okay. All right. Next up, I need to do All right. So next up, I need to do my um, water resist here. Where's my little So I use what are called clay shapers. I have a set of three clay shapers. I actually, oddly enough, I didn't use them for my clay. <laughs> but they're silicone. They have silicone tips. 
So I have two round and a small flat. And these work great for doing putting your um, masking fluid on. Because then you don't have to worry about destroying a brush or cleaning a brush. Oh, I did not put any. Oh, you guys get to see this. I'm going to color my masking fluid. That way it's easy for me to see. And I like using alizarin crimson or <coughs> red. I'm just going to use alizarin crimson. That's what I used last time. It seemed to be a good color. So. So I'm just going to take some alizarin crimson. pigment yeah I'm gonna need more than that All right, I'm going to put the cover back on here and shake or shake it, shake it, shake it. It should be more than enough. To dissolve that pigment. Ah, uh, yes, they do, Dee Dee. They also work very well on the jelly plate for creating designs okay still need more all right i think i'm going to have to use let me get an old i'm gonna get an old acrylic paintbrush There we go. All right, so now you can see that it's pink. And it's much easier for me that way to get it on my painting and see where I'm putting it so that it's not the same color as my background. I got that hint from Maria Rajnamug. Anyway, she's she's a Polish watercolor artist. <laughs> All right, so I need to use this for my waterfalls. And I'd rather put it on in more places than less because it's, it's easier to add than to take away when you want your pure white. And I did a little bit of a gel medium along the bottom here. It's land, so there's a little bit of texture already along that bottom. Uh oh. Oh Jean, you're not being very careful. One moment, please. Sugar. Sugar, sugar. Sugar, sugar. Yeah. 
There's another water. This is Laverty Falls, it's called. It's on the Dobson Trail, which is a hiking trail here in southern New Brunswick. I forget how many kilometers long it is, but it goes all the way down to our national park and through the national park. And my cousin's dad, the one who passed away a couple of weeks ago, was instrumental in getting this, uh, the Dobson Trail uh, cleared and set up. Okay, let's see. All right, and then there's a little bit of white over here. Around this rock. And right here as well. Okay. That should do the trick for now. All right, so now we have to wait for that to dry before we can work on that area. So what I'm going to work on is the rocks up front here. All right, so a moment, I just need it. Hey, Norma. Can't remember if I said hi to you or not. Hey, Julie. Welcome, welcome. I'm working on my air dry clay watercolor mixed media canvas. And it's for my niece's girlfriend. She has a goal of hiking to all of the waterfalls in Nova Scotia and as many as you can in New Brunswick. So that's why I'm doing this panel for her. For her Christmas present. Oh no, is the pink thing happening again? It happened for me at the very beginning of Janet's, but only the very beginning. I didn't notice it after that. Yeah, it seems to have had it a couple of times at Z's the other night. And if you make a mistake and you put it somewhere where you don't want it, just wait till it dries and peel it off. It's your best way to get rid of it. I really want to do these rocks first, so I'm going to dry this. I'd rather work down than I don't get my... Oh, I don't know what I'm knocking on the floor now. Yeah, well, there's nothing we can do about it, Eileen. have no idea why we get it, and so not really too much can be done about it. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if I should say this, Joycey, but who's there? I could regret asking. 
Okay, so these rocks up here, um, they have kind of a, the ones nearest the water have a viridian hue to them. So I'm going to start with that. Okay, so I'm going to get my viridian. I just, I did not put, um, my viridian hue in my palette. I just put the viridian. Uh, all right, it's right after my leaf green. All right. I didn't get my map made yet, but I decided to put them in my palette in the same order as they are. <coughs> on the chart because it still divides my warm and cool colors warm and cool uh primaries in a way that are is easy to figure out so All right, and it's just a very slight viridian hue. So I'm going to water down that viridian a fair amount. And I'm going to pre-wet the rocks here. So I had a little bit of blue in that brush from the sky, but that's okay. Oops, I'm going down a little bit onto the water, but that's okay. It's going to be dark anyway. Excuse me. Now, the tricky thing with this, when you're working with the clay and the dimension, you have to make sure that you don't leave the uh, edges of the clay. You have to make sure... You get color on the height as well. <laughs> okay. So this side also has a little bit of that Viridian hue, especially down on these lower ones. Most of this will be hidden, the viridian, but it uh, will give that undertone through the gray. Okay. 
these ones have more of my I'm going to put an undertone of burnt umber on them. Some of them are going to get like a, a neutral tint, a bluey gray, and some are going to get brown. But I'm going to put a very light, very, very light burnt umber layer. Let me make sure I know which one's burnt umber after the brown. All right. I messed up my brown because I left, well, it was the burnt sienna and brown that I messed up because I left out my permanent magenta. I forgot to put it in. So then I had to move my browns over. I was being so careful. Of course, you get to the bottom row, and what do you do? You mess up on the very bottom row. So this is very interesting. It um, it doesn't work exactly like painting on paper because it's not quite as absorbent as paper because it's just a thin, you know, layer. But it does allow your watercolors to work to a point as watercolors. I need a tissue. Hi, Lena. Lena, what? What? Ooh, ooh. Oh, she'll probably figure it out, Eileen. Poor Z. Uh, maybe, maybe she can hook up and do it via <laughs> as an online class, and she won't be able to travel there. Sorry, I had to take a cup of, sip of coffee. All right. Uh oh, I don't want that there. Uh, accidentally got that on rocks. Wasn't watching what it was doing close enough. I not put rocks there oh yeah because I'm just gonna paint them on because it's and it's because it's kind of more trees and stuff there than it is rocks so that's why I didn't put any clay over there okay now these ones are going to have um Ross Sienna as their background. So it's right before Umber 
Uh, okay, so Ross. Yeah, Ross Sienna's that one. Okay. Just making sure I get the right paint here. I guess I don't really, with this, I don't really need to. Uh, Pre-wet. I'm uh, getting these watered down to like, so it's really the texture of water or skim milk, I guess. For this first layer. Because you just want to color the... Basically, kind of want to rocks with your undercoat under color. Yes, I did, Jilly. I did two layers, um, Jilly, of TriArt, which is the Canadian brand. I'm sure you probably had TriArt before. Um, I used TriArt watercolor ground. I actually like it better than the Daniel Smith stuff, and it's quite a bit cheaper, too. <laughs> but, yes, I did it over the wood and over the clay. Watercolor ground, yeah. I have used embossed paper on the jelly plate, Lena. I actually had some 12 by 12 embossed scrapbooking paper. It was almost, it was like wallpaper, almost embossed wallpaper. And uh, yeah, I've used that on the jelly plate. And I've used embossed plat pieces of plastic that I embossed. Yep. Very cool. Excuse me. Tummy's gurgling. I'm even going to do a very light raw sienna underneath where that grass is going to be there, too. Actually, I don't think I'm going to do the edge. I'm going to do the edges black, I think. So I'm, I'm going to ignore the edges. I'm either going to do them white or black. I think I want to do them black. I think it'll... I think it'll pop better off the wall if the edges are black. Okay, so that's the initial coat on that. Okay, so... 
Excuse me, sorry. All right, so let's try that. Oh, sorry, I got distracted reading the chat. Oh, my nose is all stuffed up today. So today, I should have said, I should have did my greeting. Good evening and welcome to Music Scrap, the musical scrapper. It was a, It is a snowy, stormy day here on the east coast of Mars, east coast of Canada. Um, schools are closed in our school district. today so teachers will be very happy they'll have a shorter week now <laughs> the last week before school school uh, Christmas break okay so all right, I'm going to start with my rocks here. Let me zoom in. So I need to do a gray mix here. Actually, I need to. Before I continue, I need to use some of this raw sienna over here to uh, warm up couple of places here. Then, let's see. All right. I go to the top. All right. So I need to mix my gray and i don't think i'm going to use my neutral tint i think i'm going to mix it because i'm going to want to use it for the water and i do not want to use a mixed tint so i'm going to use my ultramarine dark oh i need a So I need oh, my ultramarine deep, excuse me. Oh, that's a lovely. Look at that color. Um, by the way, I'm using my Shin Hans, not my M. Grahams. Look at that yummy color. Oh, I think I need to do a little more. Let me add some brightness here, guys. There we go. Look at that yummy color. Oh. So ultramarine dark deep which is my, the same as my, reg, just my regular ultramarine blue in my M. Grahams, but Shin Han has an ultramarine light as well, which is kind of halfway in between the cerulean and, and uh, ultramarine deep. Now I'm going to need quite a bit, so let's get more of that up there. And then to that, I like my burnt umber. Either It's either burnt sienna or burnt umber, and I like burnt umber to make my gray. And I think I put too much in. Oh, I'll have to test it. Oh, it looks like it might be okay. Let's do a test. Get one of my little strips here. It might be a little too brown. No, actually, it's pretty good. Look, I've gotten pretty good at that. So it's a little smidgen on the brown side, but not really, which is fine for my rocks, actually. Yeah. 
So I'm adding some color on, and I'm going to go in and wet my brush. And let the color move a little with just water. And it does move differently on this watercolor ground because the surface under it is hard with the clay and the wood. But it does still work, it does still move. Sorry, I turned it upside down just so I could get at the. Uh, I'm not doing details yet. Just trying to get some shapes put in. It's down here where most of this green shows through. So. Ooh, a little too much, so I'm going to go in and clean my brush. My number six, because it uh, still has a little bit of substantial size, but it does have a good point, the Cotman brushes. So I still have control. They're not quite as soft as the other. Well, it's interesting. The bristles are soft, but the, the, um, it's, it's hard to explain. It's like the silver black velvet is compared to the silver black velvet. This has a lot of spring, but the brushes, the bristles themselves. Hey, Jillian. Oh, that's all right, Jillian. Let me zoom in a little bit here on what I'm working on, actually, for you. And let's see if I need to uh, hold on. Oh, one moment, please. Let me open my, I didn't even open my settings app here. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm just, uh, there we go. It's easier to do it by manual than autofocus. Okay. Actually, actually I'm going to get my, hold on, I'm going to move my iPad a little closer to me here. There we go. All right. All right, so I need to go in with some. Brown here as well. So this is burnt umber. I'm going in with to add a little bit of uh, light here. The thinned out burnt umber. So now I can go back in with my dark here. Well, 
can hear the snow plow out in our parking lot. And I can hear them shoveling the steps. My neighbors. Oh, huh. the waterfall is going to have to come down over there. So I'm going to have to use some white wash. All right, now I need to go back in, get some water on my brush. So I want to do a very light. Coating. I still have to have that green show th through, but I apologize if you can probably hear that right outside my window. It's half snow it's very kind of right on the freezing point so it's uh, coming down as snow but it's very wet and hard so it freezes then when it gets on the steps so it sounds like they're having to scrape it off the stairs of my upstairs neighbor's apartment all right so i'm going now in with a fine liner Oh, Lena, of course. I think it's starting to look like uh, rocks already myself. If I do say so myself. So I'm going in now and I'm going to add some more dark, dark with my fine liner. Because you need good contrast in order to give dimension. Granted, I'm getting a lot of help with the dimension A, but I didn't completely shape all the clay, so I need to paint in some of the dimension here. <clears throat> Thanks, Bath. Thanks, <laughs> Bath. Pun intended, right, Beth? Sorry, I did not. Oh, actually, I think that came from my phone. Got three things to make sure I mute every time. And
going out for breakfast or lunch, depending on the roads and the weather tomorrow morning with my BFF. We are trying a Christmas get together. Joyce has got old Danny boy uh, uh, ringing in everybody's head now. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are cold. Of course, you can't sing since I have that voice left after that. And that's what's tough about going to church now. I can't sing anymore. Can't see oh, it's terrible. It's my life, and I can't do it. I'm not going to paint, obviously. I'm not painting every little rock in. I'm trying, just trying to get the scale of the... Uh... Now, I'm going to actually, now that I'm close, I'm going to take some of the... light out so that you can see the actual because it's too a little too bright and taking the brightness down a little bit oh sorry there we go that's a little closer to reality Okay, so over here I need to add a little bit of my burnt umber, some of this. Oh, actually, I think I can use this one for here. It's, it's quite a bit darker. This one is in the shadows under the tree. Under the trees, uh. I should say.
not a whole lot of definition in that rock area. It's going to need a little bit of brown over top of that once that dries. All right, I need to mix more of my black. And I need some more burnt umber as well. I need to thicken it up a little bit, make it a little darker. And burnt umber. And I also need my... Oh, please excuse my nose, my running nose. All right, so ultramarine, burnt umber. And that time definitely have too much. I think uh, too much brown. Actually, it's kind of a nice color for these rocks here and for some of the dark. So I think I'm gonna do that. So it's a very dark brown rather than a, a very gray, brownish gray rather than the true gray, which is kind of what I need right here. So that's good. Going in to get some clear water because it's a little bit lighter up here. So I'm going to add even a little bit more burnt um, uh, burnt umber into that. Lighten it up a little more with this area up here. So I'm starting where I want it darkest. Then I'm going back, cleaning my brush, and then moving some of the pigment up. So remember, this is still a non-detail <clears throat> non layer, still just adding color. Hey, May! Oh, nice, May. Hello, hello. These ones up here are quite a bit lighter, but I still want to get that brown in there. All right, so now I'm going to go in with my rigor again, liner. OK, 
Okay, I need to add a little bit of ultramarine to this. Get it to a gray here again. No, now I think I have too much. And now I think it's blue. Yeah, sorry, I'm using the wrong brush, so I'm not getting my. Let's go back to the brush I know for my amounts. Go back to the number. There we go. I think it needs a little more blue in there, but okay. It's good for my darks here. Jean, sorry, is it Jean or Jeannie? Two syllables are one, Jeannie M, because we've got several Jeans and Jeannies. And excuse me for a moment, please. I'm going on mute just for a moment so I can blow my nose. Oh, man, it's so much easier when you have a mute button on your microphone. Oh, because it's like right here. I can just click mute. I don't have to go in with my mouse. And oh. Okay. Now. Okay, so let's come over and let's do these ones. So these ones kind of a combination. There's a little bits of gray and little bits of brown. So I'm going to go back and forth.
<laughs> Lena. Yeah, right. <sighs> All right. Nina like Lena likes to write fairy tales. Now remember, I'm using watercolor, so it's going to give me transparent colors, not nice, not solid colors like you would get more so with acrylics. And I'm doing that on purpose, so I don't want to make these solid. I'm still doing it stylistically like a watercolor, or I'm trying to anyway. So for those of you who came in late, these are my Shin Han PWC's premium watercolors, which are their artist grade watercolors. All right, I need, think I need to go in with my bigger brush now with a little water to blend this in before I finish with some darker details. It's interesting because there's highlights on the rocks, but you don't want it to be too light because the sun is not really shining on them. It's just kind of a dimension created because the rest of the area is darker, so...
All right, and I need to go into this rock area and go over my dark again because it dried lighter than I want. So I'm going to go in. Add another layer. Her box was delivered. What box? From you, Janet, or what? Or I must have missed something with all the. I had so much buffering at Janet's today. It was crazy. It was like every two words. All right, I need more dark. <clears throat> so, ultramarine. Amber number. These little strips you cut off. Oh, from you. Uh, yeah, well, that's what I, I figured. That's what she might. I figured that.
Next, I have to do the rocks that are in behind the waterfalls. I'm liking this. I did this before for my cousin Susan that I hang out with. Her daughter, I made did it two years ago for her daughter, same falls because she's walked this uh, trail, hiked this trail with her boyfriend a number of times. So they even have a picture of themselves in front of these falls, which is really cool. Yeah, I like that. All right, so I'm not going to touch these rocks. I think those rocks are now the way I want them. All right. So let's do now on my screen, you can't see as much of the viridian here as actually you can see it. I mean, if I maybe if I do more contrast. Yeah. And then I look really red. I don't look quite that red. <laughs> I am red, but not that red. All right. Uh oh. Well, better use it on someone else than me. It gets overused on me, Dr. Dot. So, hey. Okay, so. Excuse me. Oh, my gosh. Sorry, my nose is. All right, so now I have to do this area that actually is behind the falls, but. So I'm going to start with Bert Umber. Uh, this might work better with a flat brush. Let's use this angle brush. I mean, obviously, where I, where I have put the, guess maybe I, sh I should have put, I should have put clay here too because there are rocks, but it's kind of, it would have to be like a thinner row of. Okay, so. Let's dry that. And then I'll wipe off what's on the top of the... Lena, oh, oh, drop my.
Robert Simmons, yeah. Okay, so um, now I'm just going to dab because what's on top of the so I'm just going to do the shapes here as if uh, for my right brush here. All right, I need a little burnt umber. Oh, wrong. Wrong one, Jean. little uh, burnt sienna here. fan of these. This Cutman brush does not stay to a point at all. The larger one's better. All right, let's see if my, let's go to, let's move down to my Zen. Okay. Now, obviously, some of this, I'm, I'm painting it as if the, uh, masking fluid wasn't there, which, of course, it is. I am definitely going to have to find my uh, white gouache. Well, I shouldn't say find it. I know where it is. It's in a tin can over there. But I didn't have a slot to put it in. So
I just have to do this whole area kind of with this dark color mixture of the dark and the burnt umber I'll just have to see how that turns out when I take off the mask and glue it. All right. Now. Let's paint in the, the water area here before I do these forward front. These uh, four front rocks. And it's going to be painted with this dark. And I will use the reflection of the water uh, waterfalls I will do with my gouache. It's easier than trying to do it with. All right, so let's dry that first layer. Hold on, I lost my, there we go. Keep going. Oops. I didn't leave this quite wide enough. I'm not sure why not. Anyway. Oh, well, welcome back, Jean. I'm glad you, uh, it back. I know this looks like a mess, but once I peel off that. Uh... All right, so over here is very dark water, so I need to do another layer here.
I think this still has to be even dark. All right. Let's work on these front rocks. And we need to get the greenery in. I don't know how much I'll get done tonight online. I don't know if anyone else is wanting to come on or not okay so all right going in with burnt umber Oh no, really? Hey Helen, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. I think I'm better off going. Back to my liner brush here now. Hold on, except I need a little, I still need more of that dark. Still need more of my black here. So I just need to mix a little bit of that with a little bit of this. Okay, on the darker brown side though. That really shouldn't be there, but eh.
All right, now I think I need to add a little bit of burnt umber into my burnt sienna for these rocks because they need a little bit more. And I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use my angle brush. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of my burnt umber into the burnt sienna to darken it just a little. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. Uh, perhaps even a little more. Don't want to get too much, though. It's easier to add than to take away. Oh, there we go. I think that works. Trying to work a little bit with the texture of the watercolor ground and of the clay. And then I'm going to use my rake brush here. This is a um, by folk art. All right, so I'm going to go in and stipple. Would work even better with a round. brush but this will as long as you go back and forth you're not going to end up with your kind of lines and then I even want to go in with a little bit of a couple of spots of the dark Thanks, Lena. So Joyce is getting some happy mail too. That's fun. Fun, fun stuff, Joycey. All right. So there's a couple here just for some differences. These ones are like more of that bluey gray color. So that's going on there. Be careful because obviously I don't want it as dark as what's up there in the background. Okay. Now I'll go in with my liner brush again. Create my crevices, and my darks. Still need to go in and add the grasses, obviously. That will be once I finish 
the rock. Lena, Lena, Lena. Oh no, Eileen, did you really? Oh no wonder she's going to kill you. Ah, ah, now I think I've guessed what you sent her. Oh, you're right. You're dead meat. Eileen, you are dead meat. Ah! Eileen is dead meat. That's going to be all grassy and stuff, so I'm not going to put the darker yellow because it'll be easier to get the grasses on if it's just the lighter. Sorry. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, that's, I wasn't sure which one. Oh my gosh, Eileen. Oh, you are in trouble. Of course, look at look at Dee Dee. How often? How long did Dee Dee say, "Oh, I don't need a die," you know, a, an electronic cutting machine? And then she got sent the cameo, and she loves it. So, pretty sure Janet's going to be the same way, huh? Oh, Janet, Janet, Janet. Are you watching my stream, Janet, or are you just uh, too fuming mad at Eileen to be watching my stream? <laughs> That's funny. Oops. Should have done that with the... Uh... That actually turned out nice, putting it on with that and spreading it with my rake. That turned out kind of cool. Oh my, I like that technique. Let's do that over here too on this one. Oh, sorry, I'm over here and you guys aren't seeing what I'm doing on these rocks. Sorry. Thanks, Lena. Oh. 
All right. So I think I am almost ready. Oh, yeah. To start adding my leaves and grasses. So I need to dry this. Let me zoom out a bit. Or is that... Thanks, Beth. I have to get a little bit more gray. I have to cover up a little bit more of that blue on these top rocks. The bottom ones are good. So let me do that now while I'm seeing that. I'm going to use my angle brush because that seemed to be working really well. Oops, I had too much brown on it, so I'll just take that up. That's okay, there's a little brown on those rocks. But I want... I want the gray up there. You need a little bit more color. There, that's better. Okay. All right. Okay, so time to add the trees in the green. Okay, so right here, is Most of the rest of it, you can't see the trunks. It's just the... the greenery. Okay. All right. Bye, Joycey. Thanks, Joan. All right, so I am going to use my, all right, 
so I'm going to start obviously with my bright greens. So I'm going to actually start a new tray here for my greens. So I'm going to want some leaf green. I'm going to want some of the greenish yellow and I'm going to want sap green. So that one, that one, and I think sap is right next. Okay, two. All right. So I need three greens. So the leaf green is the lightest. It's the one that's almost yellow. That will give me my highlights. Then the Terra Vert, which is a green, greenish, yellowish green, will be my mid-tone greens. And then sap green, and I may need to add, we'll see, I'm not sure if I have to add. No, I may not have to add. Sometimes I need to darken my sap green with a little bit of burnt umber, but I may have to for the shaded areas, but we'll see. For now, I'll just put in the sap green. All right, so there's my three greens. So I'm going to start, obviously, with my Now I'm losing pow power on my iPad.
Okay, Jillian. Oh, she probably said that a long time ago. I am going to have to do a little mixture. All right, so I'm going to take some sap green and do some with some burnt umber added. You don't add a lot of burnt umber, just enough to darken it a little. You can obviously also could have could have used a red, but I'm not using a red anywhere else because green and red are. All right, so by adding burnt umber, I get. So I can just add an, another dimension of green here. And especially on these smaller, further back trees, they're going to be darker. So the further back you go. Yeah, I know, right? Oops. So I'm trying to, you know, as you go back further, you try and just get essence of trees to get your distance. All right, so now here I'm coming back to some nice brights. So I'm just going to start with that bright color, leaf green. Shidhan calls it leaf green. I'm going to go in with some in.
going right into the palette to get some uh, main tone, whatever it's called, mass tone, sorry. I always forget what what that's called. It's called mass tone. So did someone say they were going to um, stream after me? Does anybody know? Because if they weren't planning on it, I'm going to keep going till I get this finished. Otherwise, I'll finish it off uh, camera. Thanks, Jilly. Yay, Jillian. I need to dry that before I go over with my darkest, I think. It seems like it wants to be dried. Actually, I think I need to...
Okay. All right, I think I'm going to leave that area because I like that. All right. Thanks, Eileen. Oh, no, Joan. Hey, Debbie. Hello, hello. I was just wondering if you were planning on... Oh, sorry. My knee won't bend. Just a moment. Mm. Sometimes I have to take them down off the footstool just to, so my knees aren't locked. I need to try and add a little bit more light back in here because I took, I took too much light away, but I don't know if I can. If that light green is opaque enough or not. I'll try it. I'll try it mass tone and see what happens. Uh, that's a little better, I think. Yeah, that's better. I like that. Yeah, matches the other side a little bit. In the picture, it's darker, but because I got that side bright and I like it, I t decided to brighten that first tree up. Okay, Debbie, I just, that's good. I just want, I wasn't sure. I know, I know some, some Monday, a couple of Mondays you did stream after me. So I just wanted to make sure it wasn't in your plan. All right. So now I've got the greenery down here to get into. So, once again, start with my, by laying down my light color for my highlights. All right, I think I need to use my uh, rake brush for this part. Just 
didn't quite get the effect that I want. I need to uh, try that so I can go in with some details. All right, my detail brush. Yes, Debbie, she used acrylic to um, do the pickup. Can't wait till I remove that, see how the waterfalls turned out. I may have to um, Okay, so. Excuse me.
See, gotta love these rake brushes, man. Gotta love them. All right, I'm gonna put down a little more paint. And then. Yeah, it would be cool, wouldn't it, Lena? Okay. Let's uh, zoom out just a little bit more so you can see the whole panel here. I think I need to get a little bit more trees in this area here. There that look farther away. Okay. Heat gun that. And I'll take off the masking fluid. And see what I need to do to fix up the waterfalls. detail into the falls and I think my angle brush is going to be the way to go but I want to make sure I don't have any green on it because I have to use the blue swap these back to get my browns and my darks back Alright. 
This is the scary part. Maybe my detail brush. All right, thanks, Vicky. See you later. Thanks, Lena. All right, so now the trick is Hmm, I'm not sure what it needs. It just doesn't look fuzzy enough, but I don't want to mess around with it too much. Oh, gosh, missed, uh, missed taking off some of the... Uh, that was close. And over here...
What do you think, guys? Does it look like waterfalls to you? <sighs> Thanks, Debbie. Okay, I think I like it. I just think the water here needs to be a little bit darker. So let's just go in and do Does not want to go dark. I may have to use the neutral tint on that part. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Now what am I knocking off my desk? Who knows? I know I haven't used it anywhere else, but it's very close to my black mixture that I mixed. For some reason, it doesn't want to go over that spot there. I guess it'll just look like... Okay, I think I'm going to leave it, and then I'll sign it. Okay, so now here's the question, guys, and I'll do this with acrylic. Do you think I should do the edges white? Or black. What do you think? Thanks, Dorothy. Thanks, Joan. Thanks, Helen. Thanks, Lena. Black. That's what I thought, Debbie. I thought black as well to frame it. Just wanted to make sure. I'll do it with black acrylic. So... All right, that's another gift uh, off my list. Woohoo! Now I need to go get something to eat. So Shara will like that, I'm pretty sure. That's uh, Stacia's girlfriend's name. Oh, definitely going to sign it. I'll sign right on this rock here. And um, let's see. Micron. Oh. 
<laughs> it's all bumpy, so it was hard to sign, but there we go. It's all signed. These need to be darker. Not dark enough. Thanks, Norma. No problem. All right. Thanks, Eileen. Thanks, everyone, for coming. We'll see you all later. Bye.